when you get into detective work, you get to see all these amazing characters that are real and full of all the political manifestations that that might bring up. I love that about cop stories, is that they have this inherent drama without having to hyperbolize life. My name is Ethan Hawke, and I play Tommy in uh, this new Audible original Fish Priest. I think it's pretty good. I think you might enjoy it. And this is my Audible 8. The writing of Fish Priest is basically an old-fashioned crime drama. And, um, you know, years ago I did a movie called Training Day, and it felt a little bit in the same vein. And I, I always love police drama when it's done well because their lives are incredibly dramatic, but they also touch real life, whereas opposed to superhero movies, they imagine these hyperbolic situations that aren't reminiscent of what our real life feels like. I, I play this cop, and he has a, a little club he carries around, which is a fish priest, which is a little utensil club so that you would fishermen use to kill fish and send them to the next world. So it's kind of a priest reading last rites to fish, and it's called a fish priest. And uh, our hero carries it around to intimidate people he uh, has a problem with. I always feel this way when I'm making a movie. The script is usually really good. The problem is we don't shoot it as well as it's written. You know, there's all these compromises. It says a blistering sunrise that evokes God and nature and all things past and present. And so you picture that in your head, but it's hard to shoot. And invariably it doesn't turn out like such a great sunrise and we didn't get the sunrise. So actually let's just make it noon. And what I love about books is you can picture the movie shot perfectly and done perfectly, but an audio experience, you don't, you don't have to read it, you can absorb it and you get the benefit of sound design, music, performance. It, it engages your imagination in a way. Movies do so much of the work for you and most of the time they do it badly. So in a way this, it engages the audience more. Yes, it is more work as an audience member, but I think you get more out of it, more like an experience with literature. I love living in New York City because I do love the way it sounds. I love if you just sit in a cafe and you listen to it, if you sit in the bus and you listen to people talking and the world going by. And you kind of have to choose what you see, but your ear is not discerning. It just absorbs what is, you know? And um, I, I like that. Well, that's a very interesting question, especially when you're doing a, a show about police work. You know, I mean, I had the great privilege of getting to work on Training Day with Denzel Washington and Antoine Fuqua. And that was a huge education in my life about there is a tremendous amount of police corruption, but more so, you know, they always say there's that expression, oh, it's just a few bad apples. In my experience, a lot of the apples are great. It's actually the barrel that's rotten. You know, I did a movie called Brooklyn's Finest. I did a movie called Assault on Precinct 13, and now with Fish Priest. Like, I've done a lot of research about cops, and you meet a lot of individuals that are there because they really do want to be a benefit to society. They really, they, their father did it. They want to be of use in this world. They want to do good things. And it's a very confusing moment when you talk about justice right now. The big grand issues I sometimes think are most easily understandable in personal stories. I care about the ways in which our art and our storytelling help bring us together and help open our eyes and open our ears and open our hearts to the human experience. My first acting class was at the Paul Robeson Center for the Performing Arts. And I've read a lot about him and I would like to meet Paul Robeson. You know, Born in Austin, Texas, I have to say, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'd like to... Only three? Well, I'd like to... I, I'd be interested to put Bob Dylan at that table. I would like... I, I, I want. I, if I could have Bob Marley, Jesus, Bob, Paul Robeson, and Bob Dylan, that would be a hell of a dinner party. But I, I didn't have any women. Okay, so now, now we, you don't have a dinner party without any women, so I need Eleanor Roosevelt there. I want Eleanor Roosevelt... Flannery O'Connor, Toni Morrison, Tolstoy. I want Tolstoy there. 
Yeah, the best advice I ever got, I think, was that life is long and there's plenty of time to make mistakes. There are no mistakes. It's how you respond to your mistakes. It's fascinating to watch different people throughout history just completely bottom out and turn that into something beautiful. I think people put so much pressure on themselves to do everything right and be right all the time and be their best version of themselves every second. And it's a lot of work to even know who the best version of yourself is. So I always like thinking that life is long and there's plenty of time to make mistakes. The worst advice I've ever been given is that you drive better when you're drunk. <laughs> I remember kids used to say that all the time. Nah, man, you drive better when you're drunk. Not smart. One of the things that happens in a, in a life and performing is you slowly start learning not to be so judgmental. Even when you're playing the bad guy, if you become the bad guy's lawyer, and you start to see the universe through that said bad guy's opinion, you start to see why they're doing what they're doing. And most people, most sane people, don't think, I want to be a horrible person. I've always done that, you know, just think of myself as my character's lawyer. What were they thinking? Why did they do that? Why, why might they do that? Why might they think this horrible thing is a good thing to lie about? Or, and by doing that over 30 years, you start to realize by accident, really, and also in playing lots of different people, just seeing the world from all these different angles, playing cops, playing criminals, playing priests, playing sinners, you, you start to see that our experiences aren't as unique as we think they are, that all the things that are most important to us, all these things are not unique to one individual. They're true all over the world and all through time. Thanks for watching. Check out Fish Priest an Audible original and uh, see Audible something for more videos. Who cares about that? You don't need to. Just watch my video. <laughs>